a pleasant day everyone so here we are again we are going to discuss about institutional corrections so we are going to discuss the first part or the part one of the institutional corrections which is all about introduction to corrections so Later on, we are going to discuss the two scopes of institutional corrections under which of the introduction to corrections. So we have the scope of the discussion. First scope, we have terms used in the study of corrections. So before we'll go through to the second uh, part of the discussion, we should know first the terms used in the study of corrections so that we would know why these particular terms are being used and how these particular terms uh, means in this particular study. And the second scope would be constitutional limitation of the government to punish criminals. So meaning to say, uh, there is a limitation constitutionally uh, that has been uh, followed or being followed by the government in terms of punishing the criminals. So that is in order for the personnel to avoid some legalities. So moving on. Uh, corrections as a component of criminal justice system. So the term correction, corrections, and correctional are the words describing a variety of functions typically carried out by government agencies involving the punishment, treatment, and supervision of persons who have been convicted of crimes. So, meaning to say, under which, in the perspective of the corrections or the correction and or the correctional, it is wherein the government agencies uh, doing their part, do where their functions, which involves the first is punishment. So, it is not a punishment that we know in terms of physical punishment, mental punishment, or physical and or mental torture or emotional torture for that matter but it is in a form of service of sentence while inside the penal institution so meaning to say uh, there is this what we call prescription of penalty that should be served by the uh, persons deprived of liberty while inside the penal institution or correctional institution. And the second one is we have the treatment. Under which, in the treatment, of course, uh, the government had been uh, utilizing or had been systemized a particular programs uh, and or uh, mechanics in order to treat or rehabilitate particular convicted individual. So, meaning to say, there are a lot of programs that had been designed particularly by the respective institution such as Bureau of Corrections and the Bureau of Jail and Manage, uh, Bureau of Jail Management and Penology. So the treatment that we are talking about here are the treatment that are suitable, perfectly designed to each and every person deprived of liberty in order for them to be re, uh, fully rehabilitated and or reformed for that matter. Because whenever a treatment and or a program that be... Uh, uh, instituted to a person deprived of liberty is not suited or is not uh, perfectly designed for him or for her 
So that might result into a uh, loophole or result to failure on the part of the uh, BGMP personnel and or the Bucor personnel in terms of rehabilitating and or reforming the person deprived of liberty. Uh, by the way, uh, before those persons had been convicted by final judgment of the court and uh, put into prison are being called prisoner. But in order to avoid the negative notion uh, towards those convicted individual while serving their sentence inside the uh, correctional facilities, they are now being called as person deprived of liberty. And the third one here, we have supervision of persons who have been convicted of crimes. So, meaning to say, while, while the convicted individual or persons deprived of liberty serving their sentence inside the prison facilities and or penal facilities, they are being supervised by the Bucor personnel and or the BGMP personnel in terms of custodial uh, forces in terms of uh, institutionalizing or in terms of uh, giving the treatment or the programs inside the penal facilities. So, as to the supervision, it is not a only a supervision in terms of treatment, but it is also a supervision wherein the proper care, uh, the proper custodial uh, design and or program will be given duly to those persons deprived of liberty. Because in this particular uh, program or this particular uh, supervision, it also involves uh, peer supervision uh, in terms of uh, activities as well and those daily routine uh, to be made or to be done by the persons deprived of liberty. So these are the variety of functions that are usually carried out by the government agencies. So moving on, correctional system. So correctional system is also known as penal system. So when we say penal system, it is a system wherein uh, penalizing uh, those persons deprived of liberty, which also refers to a network of agencies that functions related to rehabilitating convicted persons through either institutional-based or community-based corrections. So now, what is the difference between institutional-based or community-based corrections? In the institutional-based corrections, it is where the persons deprived of liberty are going to serve their sentence while inside the penal institution or they are serving their sentence inside the correctional facilities. So meaning to say their movement have been uh, supervised, have been monitored and there are a custodial forces that look after the welfare, welfare and also to supervise uh, the treatment program that had been designed for them. So they are not actually exercising their free will or they are not actually exercising their rights as a civilian since they are being confined inside the penal facilities. We're in community-based corrections. So the community-based corrections it is a form of rehabilitating or reforming an individual who are actually being freed to the community. So they are going to serve their sentence while outside the penal institution. They are not being 
committed inside the correctional facilities and or the penal institution instead they are uh, they are being put into a designed or a program which is community based corrections so meaning to say uh, their movement is not being uh, confined inside the penal institution actually they are uh, serving their sentence outside the penal institution so but in the same manner their movement their actions had been monitored because in the community-based corrections uh, the example programs or community-based corrections here we have first a uh, uh, parole program and we have also the provisions program uh, in the probation program and parole program both uh, convicted individual are going to serve their sentence in outside the penal institution but they are being monitored by the PPA and the uh, BPP or the Board of Pardons and Parole for Parole Program and PPA or Provision and Parole Administration under the Parole Program. So, what is the difference in the institutional based and or community based corrections is that in the institu institutional based corrections, uh, the convicted individual are going to serve their sentence inside the penal institution while the community-based corrections those convicted or adjudicated by the final judgment by the competent court are going to serve their sentence outside the penal institution but in regards with the uh, supervision and monitoring of the respective agencies and or administration which are the board of pardons and parole and the uh, probation and parole program administration programs so let's move on we have the term here correction or corrections it is also the name of a field of academic study concerned with the theories, policies, and programs pertaining to the practice of corrections. So, meaning to say, it is also the field of those academicians and or those uh, scholars who are going to, uh, to conduct a research and or the studies that pertains to the practice of corrections uh, with concern to theories, policies, and programs. So they are going to study in terms of theoretical issues or the theories that would somehow answer the questions uh, pertaining, to the, pertaining to particular programs and or treatment programs to be given to those persons deprived of liberty and we have also these policies that should be studied with the personnel of concerned uh, facilities and our concerned agencies and of course uh, programs that are suitable and fit to those persons deprived of liberty in order to enhance develop and to give uh, the proper care for those persons deprived of liberty for them to be rehabilitated and fully reformed and of course we have the following objective of the study of the correction for uh, it includes yes personal training in the perspective or in the field of development enhancement so that this particular personnel who are assigned in every aspect of the correctional programs would be able to uh, give what is due to every to each and every uh, person deprived of liberty because at the end of the day uh, it would uh, it would be the 
actions, it would be the plan, the system, and or the programs, and of course, the personnel as a whole on how they actually uh, institute, on how they actually enforce those particular programs, the policies that needs to be addressed or to each and every person's deprived person deprived of liberty and manage management as as well as the experiences of those on the other side of the fence so actually it talks about those unwilling subjects of the correctional process so meaning to say uh, they are going to study very well those persons deprived of liberty so their experiences for the personnel correctional or corrections personnel be able to determine what is due for uh, persons deprived of liberty what is suitable program treatment program for that matter to each and every person deprived of liberty because as we all know uh, persons deprived of liberty in terms of degree of offense has been categorized eh, as super maximum, maximum, medium, and minimum. Actually, we only have three uh, uh, degree of offenses. We have the maximum, uh, medium, and minimum. The super maximum de there has only been uh, categorized or been separated these are those most incorrigible meaning to say these are those who already belong to the maximum period uh, inmate or prisoner since uh, while they are serving their sentence inside a degree of uh, custodial uh, custodial monitoring they have committed some uh, crimes or even violations inside their facility so basically the objective of this study is not only uh, more on the development and or the enhancement on the skills and capabilities of the personnel to be trained but as well but most importantly is on the side of those persons deprived of liberty to address very well and to address carefully the the needs of their rehabilitation and reformation so let's move on between the 1950s and 1960s uh, the term penology has been changed into corrections so this is in order to avoid the negative notion again when using the word penology it seems like uh, leveling, neg leveling negatively those persons deprived with liberty now we're in uh, it seems like focusing more on penalization or penalty penalizing those persons deprived of liber liberty uh, seems uh, since the same with the term from prisoner or inmate has been changed into uh, persons deprived of liberty in order to avoid negative notion so penal from penology to correction so when we say penology, it seems like focusing more on penalizing, penalization, or imprisonization of those persons deprived of liberty. But when you hear the word corrections, uh, it actually gives us positive meaning or positive notion. Now we're in somewhat like focusing more on positive perspective or on the light of array na we're in uh, nagbibigay ng kahalagahan in terms of rehabilitating and reforming particular 
person deprived of liberty. It is more on correcting their behavior, uh, correcting their negative perspective to the outside world, uh, correcting their emotions and their, of course, temper. So, it is more on giving programs, uh, treatment programs with different modalities in order for them to cope up with positive perspective in life so that later on whenever they will be uh, released to the community after serving their uh, service of sentence inside the penal institution uh, they already have their positive uh, vibes or positive vision now we're in they could make use of it in terms of finding jobs or to somewhat like uh, to change their life 360 degrees so let's move on so the term correction uh, it is a branch of administration of criminal justice so criminal justice if you happen to remember uh, Philippine criminal justice system have uh, five components or have two major components which compose of five uh, pillars uh, so those components the first components component rather is formal component and the second component is non-formal component so the correction is actually belongs to formal component because it has a program, procedure, the policies, and the system that should be followed in order to administer their uh, functions and of, uh, towards those persons deprived of liberty. So, which is responsible for correction and rehabilitation of those persons who are after observance of due process. So, meaning to say, these are those convicted with final judgment uh, of course due process uh, heard before the competent court or heard before the court and was found to have violated penal law or the laws of the land in terms for that uh, for that matter so by competent judicial authority so be reminded we have the term competent judicial authority authority meaning to say it is the judicial authority who have uh, who have a authority over the subject person or the over the criminal in during the uh, during the hearing or during the investigation of the case so it is the very court wherein having the judicial authority over the person accused during the trial of the case so be reminded that correction is part of the administrative branch of the criminal justice system of the philippines which is responsible for the rehabilitation and the reformation of persons deprived of liberty moving on and also it is in charge with the responsibility for the custody so as we discussed already a while ago custody uh, taking care of or to watch over or to look after with the persons deprived of liberty under their authority and supervise and rehabilitate of those who judicially found violated criminal law so meaning to say uh, judicially found violated criminal law uh, sinabi ko na kanina na ito yung mga taong nahatulan or ng uh, na hatulan ng korte as to number of or the year of sentence to be served inside the penal institution. So, we have the two approaches of the corrections. First, institutional correction or the institution-based correction. So, na-mention ko na kanina or I've already discussed that this 
uh, type of or approach of correction is more on a rehabilitating or correcting a particular person deprived of liberty inside inside correctional facilities okay or institutions such as national penitentiaries and jails so under the national penitentiaries and or jails in terms of national prisoner uh, we have the bureau of corrections so the bureau of corrections will cater those uh, person deprived of liberty or adjudicated with a final judgment of the competent court who are going to serve their sentence three years and above or also known as uh, insular prisoners while in jail we have different levels or types of jails we have the city jail uh, we have also the municipal jail we have the provincial jail and also lock up jail so don't worry we will have a separate discussion on this national penitentiaries and the different type of jails with a, a separate presentation so for now in institutional correction or considered to be institution based correction wherein a type of reformation or rehabilitation of persons deprived of liberty while serving their sentence inside a penal institution or correctional facilities next we have non-institutional correction so I've discussed this already that it is a rehabilitation or correctional programs take place within the community okay so ang kaibahan lang ang nakagan ang maganda lang dito sa non-institutional correction ay they are going to serve their sentence kasama yung komunidad na, na kung saan the community will help actually in terms of boosting the morale of the those convicted individual and somehow serve as the uh, moving mechanism or somewhat like a support mechanism for them to be lifted up and for them to uh, emit more uh, positive vibration in life in their journey of their life so this is otherwise referred to as community-based correction so this approach the con the convict will not be placed or be released from correctional facility or jails so ibig sabihin yung convicted individual as convicted by the competent court will not be placed inside the penal facilities or they will be released from the correctional facility or jails ano kay bahan ng will not be placed or be released from correctional facility sir sabi mo kanina ito yung mga na convict ng court eh, ng competent court na hindi na hindi na kinukumit inside the jail or correctional facility tas meron naman dito be released from correctional facility ibig mo bang sabihin sir ay nakulong na sila or nakumit na sila inside the penal institution and now they will be released yes that's true because the difference there is that in will not be placed in correctional facility or jails ito yung under the probation program now we're in uh, uh, they appealed to the uh, they actually applied for uh, they actually applied for such program or the probation program na wherein right after the conviction they will automatically be put into this program and will not be commit to prison facility but before it will be happen there are a lot of considerations who are those <coughs> excuse me who are those individual be given this type of 
uh, will be given this type of program or will be put under this program. So this will also be discussed to the separate uh, uh, presentation and this is actually be discussed in the subject of non-institutional correction. While on the other hand, be released from correctional facility or jails. So ito naman yung mga convicted already uh, convicted by the court <coughs> and currently uh, serving their sentence inside the penal facility or correctional facilities and or jails. Meaning to say, they are being put in the program of parole program. In the parole program, ang kaibahan ng parole program at saka provision program, yung provision program, hindi sila na commit inside the penal institution or jail. Pero itong na ilagay sa parole program, ito yung nakumit sa penal institution at saka nabigyan ng parole program kasi they already served the minimum service of sentence. So, meaning to say, the minimum service of sentence, <laughs> kapag qualified na sila na mabigyan ng uh, parole program, and that is the time they will be put into parole program. So, yun yung kaibahan. Yung provision, hindi na ipasok sa kulungan pagkatapos na convict ng competent court. Well, itong uh, parole, uh, provision pala, yung provision, uh, provisioner na under sa provision program, they actually not being put ever in the penal facility. While in the parole program, they already put or commit, committed inside the penal institution and put under the parole program if they already serve the minimum service of sentence. <clears throat> so now let's move on. The following are the agencies of the government charged with correctional responsibility. First, we have the Bureau of Corrections. Second, we have the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology. The third is Board of Pardon and Parole. Fourth is Parole and Provision Administration. And the last is Provincial and Sub-Provincial Jails. So, in uh, Bureau, or Bureau of Corrections, this particular Bureau is responsible for national prisoners. And BGMP or the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology. Uh, this particular bureau is responsible for uh, jails under which is we have the following. We have the municipal jail. We have the city jail. And we have also a, a municipal circuit. Uh, jail. So, we have also uh, a number of years to be considered both for BUCOR and the BGMP before they will be considered as the prisoner of the BUCOR and prisoner under the BGMP uh, Bureau. And the next is the Board of Pardon and Parole. In the Board of Pardon and Parole, of course, sinabi ko kanina, uh, there are a lot of qualifications and consideration before the convicted uh, be qualified under the provision uh, under the provision program. And the same manner with the PPA or the Parole and Provision Administration. So before a particular uh, inmate, so sinabi natin inmate, these are those who already who actually or currently serving their sentence inside the penal institution will be given an opportunity under the parole program. So, ito yung uh, persons deprived of liberty na nakaserve ng minimum of their service of sentence and found by the committee 
to be qualified under the parole program and they will be given such program and we also the provincial and sub-provincial jails so these are those jails who are under the administration of the provincial provincial governors so we have the term imprisonment it is the confinement to an institution commitment to prison confinement uh, custody detainment custody held in captive held in restraint in captive in custody in jail incarceration internment keep behind bars kept as captive kept in custody kept in detention keep under arrest lock up put behind bars put in cell put under restraint sent in jail and many more so prison imprisonment it is defined as the act of confinement of a person in prison so meaning to say it is where a, it is where particular person deprived of liberty physically confined in a penal institution and or in the prison and or jail for that matter and of course restraint of one's personal liberty so meaning to say from the time the person will be put inside a jail or prison facility for that matter the personal liberty of a particular person or the person deprived uh, the person deprived of liberty has been extinguished by or has been taken away by the government for the reason of committing such institution uh, committing some uh, uh, committing some violations of the land and or committing some criminal acts for that matter so the civilian or the civil rights and the personal liberty of the the person that I am that we are talking about here or the person deprived of liberty has been restrained temporarily so meaning to say uh, temporarily it will be uh, this will be regained by the person deprived of liberty whenever they already serve their sentence and be released to the community but for the meantime since they are being committed or confined in the penal facility or correctional facilities for that matter their personal liberty and or civil rights has been restrained some of the civil rights not all civil rights enforceable detention of a man's person or his movements bucket forcible kasi wala silang magagawa because they are actually being detained or they are being confined and their movement is being controlled inside the penal facility or correctional facilities. Next, we have the constitutional limitation of the government to punish criminals. So, meaning to say the government or the personnel of those uh, bureaus that we are talking about or the agencies have their constitutional limitation in terms of enforcing or in terms of instituting uh, punishment towards the criminals so we have the legal basis as to the legal rights against unlawful imprisonment or detention so based on the text under the 1987 Constitution which states no person may be deprived of lives liberty and property without due process of law so be reminded we have the phrase or the words here may be deprived so meaning to say they will not be deprived of lives liberty and property without due process uh, and property whenever they are not whenever they are found clean or they are not guilty for that matter but they will be deprived of lives liberty and property without uh, whenever they are found guilty so but since we have this uh, 
writes that no person may be deprived of life's liberty and property without due process of law. So, meaning to say, walang ma-deprive ng life and or kalayaan at saka ari-arian kapag hindi sila na what? Kapag hindi sila na uh, heard before the court with the practice of the due process of law by this uh, uh, individual who are being authorized by the law to exercise such and or to observe such right of each and every citizen of the Philippines. So, considering that the Constitution is not a self-executing law, again, considering that the Constitution is not a self-executing law, so meaning to say it is not the Constitution that will be, exec uh, will be used in terms of executing the law, there is the revised penal code that actually provides punishment not only to public officers violating this constitutional right of an individual but also private persons as well so meaning to say since we have the mother of laws the mother of laws that we are talking about here is the 1987 philippine constitution now we're in the philippine constitution is the basis of other laws that had been made so meaning to say the revised penal code that had been established or crafted is actually based from the constitution of the philippines so it provides punishment not only to public officers meaning to say uh, the the article 3 of the 1987 philippine constitution basically uh, is the is the bill is the bill that prohibits the the powers and functions of the government uh, of the government officers and or the public officers to be exercised uh, unlawfully or to be exercised beyond what is uh what is required by the law and also this will covered as well the private individual who do the same towards others other individual so meaning to say this constitutional right is prohibiting public officers and or uh, the public officers to exercise their power and their functions violently but also it prohibits private individual or private persons uh, to violate the rights of others <clears throat> so we have to consider or we have here the considered legal grounds for detention of any person First is commission of the crime. So, meaning to say, uh, in order for the person to be detained or to be uh, put behind bar bars, so the following are the legal grounds. The first is commission of the crime. So, of course, the person uh, will be put behind bars or will be detained uh, whenever they committed crimes. So, Second is violent insanity or any other ailment requiring compulsory confinement in a hospital. So, ibig sabihin, uh, these are not these are those individual who don't commit any of crimes. Instead, they have violent insanity or ailment sakit that requires compulsory confinement in a hospital. Or sometimes we call it hospital arrest that needs to be addressed for their will uh, for their welfare note that under the government exercise of police power 
those persons who are infected of contagious disease may likewise be separated to the rest of the population. <coughs> uh, this is uh, actually in the perspective of uh, avoiding the the infect in the infectious disease or the contagious disease to the other individual so the government's initiative is somewhat like to separate those uh, individual who are suffering from contagious disease that might uh, contaminate or able to communicate it with other individual so therefore uh, they need to be uh, arrested through police power but not by means of commission of crime but it is for the purpose of health uh, health uh, concern of the state moving on so the following are the suggested alternatives for detention and imprisonment so first we have wider use of bail and other approved methods of release from custody so uh, meaning to say uh, there should be a wider use of bail to consider those types of violations of an individual that would somehow uh, that would somehow uh, let the person not to be detained instead they will be temporarily freed uh, from detention and or imprisonment and other approved methods of release from custody so kanina lang we discuss about the uh, we discuss about the probation and the parole programs and we have Actually, we have different uh, programs that prohibits individual from being detained or an alternative programs for an individual not to be detained and or to be imprisoned. <coughs> and next is we have elimination from the jail and prison of those who should be elsewhere like those mentally ill and juveniles. So, elimination from the jail and prison, like mentally ill. So, meaning to say, the, there, are, there are some other uh, individuals who happen to be uh, violated some laws and or uh, socially approved behavior due to their mental illness. So, meaning to say, ito yung mga taong may uh, sakit sa pag-iisip na their movement, their actions are uncontrollable. We, their actions are beyond comprehension. Uh, their actions are in contrary as to their, in contrary as to their normal uh, thinking. So, meaning to say, uh, they are in the stage of insanity because most of the time these people are uh, prone to commit uh, violations and are prone to commit some uh, physical uh, violation towards others so they should be separated as well as the juveniles the juveniles should not be exposed to those incorrigible individual that would somehow uh, uh, adapt the behavior of those adult uh, person deprived of liberty so it should be uh, the deeds or the doings of the the personal in charge of rehabilitation and reformation well actually it is in the system now that the mentally ill and the juveniles are separated from the adults and those incorrigible uh, 
inmates and or a person deprived of liberty. Third is payment of fines instead of imprisonment if penal law permits. So, meaning to say, instead of putting inside a penal facility or correctional facilities, uh, payment will do, or it is a suggested alternative that payment of fines should be encouraged by the government instead of putting behind bars. Well, actually, we have uh, this system that had been practiced that those who violated or commit crimes will be fined instead of being put in the prison. So, these are the suggested alternatives for detention and imprisonment. So, <clears throat> this is the end of part 1 of the introduction of corrections. <clears throat> so, we will have our recap now as to our uh, discussion. So, we already discussed the terms used in the study of corrections and we also tackled the constitutional limitation of the government to punish criminals. So basically, we have the 1987 Philippine Constitution that, that governs the constitutional limitation or constitutional powers and functions of the public officers. So, <clears throat> so of course, be reminded that the very concept of the corrections is to uh, we have to punish, to rehabilitate, and to supervise. So, in the punishment, of course, it is in the form of service of sentence as to the number of years to be served by the persons deprived of liberty inside the correctional facilities and the second one is uh, treatment yeah, so the treatment here involves different uh, programs or modalities that uh, somehow address the needs the need uh, the needs of persons deprived of liberty in terms of reformation and rehabilitation and the third one is <coughs> Of course, uh, we have the uh, supervision uh, in terms of their supervision as to their movements, the programs that have been given for them uh, in terms of their uh, works and their daily routine while serving their sentence inside the penal institution. So, not only the uh, their movements and or their uh, doings inside the penal institution, but also those uh, community-based programs that needs to be supervised if they actually following the the rules and the regulations and the terms and the conditions that set off by the program that they are that they are in. So, thank you for listening and thank you for giving your time with our discussion for today, which is the third part, the first part rather, the introduction to corrections. So, thank you and God bless.